if Adolf Hitler hated Jews because he was himself in part Jewish and filled with self-loathing, how do we explain why millions of Germans collaborated, gleefully collaborated, in persecuting and killing Jews when they themselves were not Jewish? These and other questions will be answered right after this. I am Professor Jerome Arkenberg, and I've been teaching a wide variety of history courses at colleges across this country for the past 30 years. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the rise to power of Adolf Hitler. Hitler and other Nazis' ideas, including that of anti-Semitism, and a brief look at the Holocaust. At the end, I'll have the wrap-up quote on this video. But first, make sure to click like, share, especially subscribe, and that little bell thingy so I can continue to bring you more great videos just like this one. Adolf Hitler, born in 1889, committed suicide in 1945, was born in Austria. He himself was not actually German. He was the son of a customs official, and despite many modern reports trying to explain his racial views, was neither Jewish, gay, or anything else other than a hateful German, excuse me, Austrian. After his father's death, he moved to Vienna in 1909, attempting in vain to be admitted to the Imperial Academy of Art there. And here we see three of his paintings. Makes you wonder if only the Imperial Academy had accepted him and encouraged his art. Would World War II and the Holocaust ever have happened? In 1913, he moved to Munich, and upon the outbreak of World War I in 1914, enlisted in the Bavarian Army, a subset of the Imperial German Army, where he served with honor and decoration, fighting in the trenches of the Western Front, 
until he was nearly blinded by a gas attack. If you don't want to know what he is, that's him right there. Him right there. He does not yet have the Charlie Chaplin mustache, which he himself admitted he stole from Chaplin. After the end of the war, infuriated by Germany's surrender and humiliation at the Treaty of Versailles, Hitler joined. He did not found, he did not start. He joined the nascent National Socialist German Workers' Party and quickly rose to leadership due to his charismatic personality and dramatic oratory, which he practiced over and over again as seen in these pictures, which are all of him practicing. Since man, he said, is by nature a quote-unquote fighting animal, the German nation must be a fighting nation and must fight lest it perish. But as the fighting capacity of any nation depends on its purity, brute force must rid it of impurities in people and ideas, such as Jews and pacifism, in order for Germany to survive. So, he promised socialism for the workers. In fact, he was instrumental in having the term socialist added to the name of his party. Not that he, em not that he embraced socialism or wanted it. He said himself, it was simply a way to delude the masses into joining his party. So, he promised socialism for the workers, kind of anti-communism for their capitalist bosses, romantic nationalism and authoritarianism for German conservatives, and anti-Semitism as a scapegoat for the loss of the war and the economic disasters of the 1920s. Hitler's energy and intuitive mastery of media politics allowed the Nazis to gain support by promising both nationalization and the protection of private ownership. Yes, it doesn't make sense. It's mutually uh, antagonistic. But remember, fascism doesn't actually have to make sense. He also stressed industrial might, but also the virtues of rural life, and emphasized the necessity of taking both radical and conservative measures. Even an aborted coup, the Beer Hall Putsch of 1923. Seen here, of course, in a painting, Hitler and his plotters, including General Ludendorff of the German General Staff. Here's Hitler, 1923, and here is a picture of the Putsch in action with the troops about to put it down. Anyway, this failed. Hitler was convicted and imprisoned, but this failed to tarnish the movement which, however, struggled to gain mass acceptance until the Great Depression propelled Hitler into power, the only fascist dictator popularly elected in a free election. Hitler called for the defense of blood and soil, Aryan values and Lebensraum for the Nordic race to rule as a master race wasn't just the german race it was the nordic race to rule as a master race here we see a map of the jewish population's distribution when hitler came to power in 1933. this is because genocidal anti-Semitism became the dominant element in Nazism, which differs from most other fascisms, many of whom never advocated genocidal slaughter of the Jews. Even here, here, lots of many different tropes. 
the Jewish man trying to lure the poor children, good, trying to lure the good German children into doing ooh, all sorts of unspeakable acts. Of course, oh look, Jews don't swim here. The this which links the Jew, depicted as some kind of ape, to Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin. Of course, here a very popular game in Germany during the 1930s, Judenrauss. See how quickly you can drive the Jews out of your neighborhood. too many fascism seemed a good solution at the time its promise of economic and political superiority was destroyed in the defeats of world war ii and the robust revival of capitalism in the 1940s and especially the 1950s and after but has nazism really been consigned to the ash heap of history The wrap-up quote. The ideas by which we are governed are diametrically opposed to those of Soviet Russia. National Socialism, 
is a doctrine which applies exclusively to the German people. We believe that in the long run, man can be happy only among his own people. We live in the belief that the happiness and the achievements of Europe are indissolubly connected with the existence of free, independent, national states. We recognize that every people has the right to its own inner life according to its own needs and character. National Socialism strives to solve social problems, to alleviate tension, and to settle other questions in its own nation by methods which are compatible with our general human, spiritual, cultural, and economic ideas, traditions, and circumstances. It aims at bridging over and equalizing unfavorable contrast in social life and uniting the whole population in collaborative work. But the Jew regards work as a means of exploiting other peoples. The Jew works unproductively, using and profiting from the work of others. The Jew destroys and has to destroy because he is completely lacking in any concept of work for the common good. The Jew is harmful to us. We must oppose the materialistic infection of the Jewish pest with a flaming ideal. Adolf Hitler, 1935. Let me know what you think of this quote in the comment section below. Also, what you liked about this video and what other historical topics or subjects you'd like to see in future videos. Be sure to click like, share, and especially subscribe as it will help me bring you more great videos just like this one. And click on that little bell thingy so you'll know when the next History Waits for No One video is posted. If you want to know more, there are recommended studies on this topic in the description below, along with other ways to connect with me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the past. <music>